Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Nisha Singla and in this session we are going to talk about our first hook and that is you state hook. In our previous videos we have already covered about on a very high level like what are hooks and why hooks are introduced in functional component. So if you haven't covered that video yet, I strongly recommend to watch that video before proceeding with this video. I will provide the link in the description below, you can check it out. Now let's get started. In our previous video, we have already discussed about this piece like now functional components are quite powerful and they can do pretty much everything which a class component can do and one of them is state. So before react version 16.8.0 only classes can use states but functional component doesn't have the concept of states but now we can do that as well. So use state basically is a hook that allows you to implement states in functional component. So let's first understand the difference between states and prop and then we will see how we can use use state hook to implement state inside a functional component. At the end all components are basically the javascript functions only right. So for an example in regular javascript if we create any function right suppose we have this customer function which takes certain parameter like account number and car type right. So we pass this data from outside to this customer. So now if the same thing we want to implement in react we will say customer is a component and account number and car type are the props. Okay, so now you can say props are like functions parameter. So first point you need to understand like whenever you want to pass some information from parent component to child component, then these data we can pass with the help of props. So the role of prop is just to pass data to your component from outside. That's it. And the same thing we do with functions parameter as well. So I hope prop is clear. Now let's understand where state fits into this structure. Now if I talk about a simple javascript function right anything that you pass from outside a function that we receive as a parameter but every function have some internal logic internal variable that is bounded to that function only. You cannot access those data outside that function right. So like if I talk about this customer function which may have total transactions, summary statement and lot of other data which is related to this customer function only. You cannot get it outside this customer function. So it means these variables are local variables to this customer function. Similarly in react if you have a component and you want to handle the data that is local to that component. So those data you can handle with the help of states. So with comparison to function you can say that states are the local variable of a functions. So now if I give you a definition of state so you can say basically state is an object that is used to you know contain data or information about the component and that data can change over the time based on user interaction maybe some event or maybe some system generated events. So if you want to change the behavior of your component over a period of time then that can be done with the help of states. So I hope now you get an idea like what is the difference between prop and what is state and it is very easy when you compare it with the simple javascript okay. So this example I have given you so that you can understand what is prop and what is state because we all know how functions work. So it would be very easy for you to compare parameters with props and local variable or local data inside a function with a state. Other than that there are a lot of other differences between props and state as I told you like the responsibility of prop is just to pass data from parent to child. So props are immutable you cannot modify the value of props but the behavior of states are itself is you know dynamic that should change over a time based on user interaction. So states are mutable as props cannot be changed so these are only read only values. But on the other hand states can change and we all know that the idea of props is just to pass data from parent to child but on the other hand states are local to component and that's why you cannot access the state outside the component where it has defined. So keeping all these comparison in mind I hope you got an idea like where to use prop and where to use state. So if you need to pass some information across the component you need to use props and if you have a component 
and you want to handle its behavior based on user interaction so those things can be handled with the help of state so i hope this difference is clear so now let's see how you can use states inside a functional component and that we can do with the help of a hook and that is called use state hook as i told you hooks are only meant to be used inside a functional component so use state is a hook which basically used to implement state inside a functional component so you cannot use use state inside a class based component so let's see how we can use that move to editor so inside this source folder what i am doing i am creating one folder and giving name of use state so inside this let's create one component and give it a name of maybe com comment.js so it it would be a functional component so quickly we can write the code for that so as i told you use state is a built in hook in react all hooks that is defined in react it will be in this package so you just need to import that so what i will do i will simply import use state like this so whichever hook you want to use you just need to import it here so now once you have imported you can use it what exactly i want to do as of now suppose i have a button here and it has a text of maybe change text or change title i will display something here in this h1 so what i want uh, like as soon as i click on this button i need to change the title of my h1 okay this is just a very basic example because the idea of this example to show you the syntax so how we can do that so in that case prop cannot do this because prop can only pass the information to this component but if you want to do some dynamic behavior then we can do it with the help of state so as i told you if you remember my previous video all hooks need to be defined on top right so if you want to define a hook how you need to do you can create one variable and maybe as of now let me give it a name of object and to use use state you just need to use use state hook name and here it basically tells you like what will be the initial value because when you define any state state is a kind of variable only right every variable must have some default value you can initialize your state with some default value here so if you want that default value should be string you can define string if you want it should be blank leave it like this but ideally you should define any initial value so maybe as of now what i said like initial value is maybe good morning so let me do console.log just to show you first what exactly this object is returning as of now it will not return anything because this uh, comment component i didn't plug anywhere so i will open my app.js file and here i will import this comment component so now what i can do i can simply call this one like this right so now you should be able to see this button over here okay so when you open your developer tool and go to console you will see one object okay one object is coming from user we can remove this one console and that is good morning so you can see this it is returning me a array and in this array the first value is my initial state and the second one is the function so now you can say like this object is returning me a array that has two value the first value of this array is the state value whatever you have inside your state that can be accessed using first value of this array and the second one is the action so action is basically method right so whenever you want to modify that state you have to trigger some action right so that you can do with the help of second value of this array that is the function so to make it simplify now you can say something like this like it has two values so first i am holding it in a title and second one i am making a method that is handle title so here this title will basically points to my initial state and this is a method which you can call to modify this state so now if i try to bind this title here it should bind good morning to this h1 now this object is not there right so we can remove this one and you can see good morning okay 
now what exactly i want to do i want to modify this title i want to modify this st uh, state whenever i click on this button okay so on click of this i need to modify my title from good morning to good evening so that can be done with the help of this function that is a handler to modify my state so what you can do i can bind a click event here in react all events should be in camel case i will talk on this in the later videos but as of now you just need to remember it would not be like a normal dom events you have to use in a camel case and here you can bind your method so as of now i am directly calling this function this function will change this title from good morning to good evening so when you save the changes and initially the value of state is good morning and when i click on this one it will change to good evening so this is how you are modifying the behavior of your component with the help of state so just to give you a quick recap you state is a predefined hook in react that basically you can use inside your functional component to implement state state is a kind of data that is basically a local data of your component so if you want to implement some dynamic behavior inside a component that's changed based on user interaction so that you can modify with the help of state so in this example i want to change the title that is a my state on a click of a button so i have used this new state and mentioned my initial state would be good morning so this title will always point to the state initially it will point to my initial state and afterward whatever state i have changed it will point to the updated state and handle title is the handler that will help me to modify this state so what i did whenever i click on this button i have make a call to this handle title function and passed the updated value so this is how your use state works so this is a very small example about use state i hope this one is clear and i will create one more video to explain in more depth about u state because u state can be more complex because initially my state is just a string right but as per the project re requirement your state can hold a uh, array it can hold a object or sometime you have to handle the state based on the previous state as well so there are so many things you can do in with the help of u state so all those scenarios we are going to cover in the next video but before the next video make sure you understand the concept of u state and the basic syntax how it works so i will see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye